All right, welcome everyone. Thank you so much for joining us today. Um, and I apologize, my light doesn't seem to work too well. So it looks like I'm in the HOD cave. So thank you for coming. I'm delighted to have uh, the communications people here from uh, the House of Deputies and they'll introduce themselves and talk about the various resources that are available to you and how they will be covering uh, the news. You all are so essential to general convention and especially in the House of Deputies, uh, we, we have really worked hard in the last few conventions to make it a hospitable place for media, for communicators, as well as to provide various resources that will help you do your jobs. Uh, we value transparency. So we, we want to know, we want to hear, we want to read uh, what you are reporting and the church at large benefits by your efforts. Uh, being hospitable and providing resources that's a little more uh, complicated during the time of COVID-19, but we will make every effort uh, to continue to be as hospitable as possible to each of you and to provide the resources necessary uh, for, for you to do your, your critical work. Let us pray. Pray first for the, for the church. Gracious Father, we pray for thy holy Catholic church, fill it with all truth, in all truth, with all peace. Where it is corrupt, purify it. Where it is in error, direct it. Where in anything it is amiss, reform it and report it. Where, where it is right, strengthen it. Where it is in want, provide for it. Where it is divided, reunite it. For the sake of Jesus Christ, thy son, our savior. Amen. And finally, for the mission of the church. Ever living God, whose will it is that all should come to you through your son, Jesus Christ, inspire our witness to him that all may know the power of his forgiveness and the hope of his resurrection, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. I'd now like to turn this over to Rebecca Wilson. And I just wanted to, hello, uh, there's Allie. I just wanted to, uh, to welcome uh, Allie Gannett from Episcopal Communicators and ask you to, uh, to say a couple of words on behalf of communicators before we really get going. Sure, thank you so much. And thank you so much for partnering with us as we offer these um, webinars leading up to General Convention. I'm a big General Convention fan. Um, like Episco Fest, which I love. Um, and so I know how great it can be and also how taxing and uh, exhausting and nerve wracking covering it can be. So um, these are hopefully gonna be really helpful to our members and other people at large. And so thank you for partnering with us. We're really glad to be doing that. And, and uh, thanks for all of you being here. You see uh, probably that we're not in a webinar format, we're in a meeting format. Um, a few days ago when we, uh, when we looked at the list of all of you who are coming, we thought it would be uh, nicer for us to be in a meeting uh, and Zoom now makes it possible to, to convert a webinar to a meeting. So we're, um, we're all here together. Feel free to use the chat to, uh, to chat with each other, to chat with us. Um, I want to introduce the, the Office of the House of Deputies team who will be there to work with you and, and provide uh, resources for you at General Convention. Then I'm going to talk a little bit about uh, kind of the lay of the land uh, at the 80th General Convention in the House of Deputies. My partner, Jim Naughton, is going to talk about deputy news. No, I'm sorry, that's not right. My partner, Jim Naughton, is going to talk about covering General Convention as a journalist, as a communicator. And then Ann Swarson is gonna talk about deputy news, the news operation that we run in the House of Deputies. Uh, this will be the third convention of, for deputy news. Um, then Lindsay Ardry, who I think is maybe not here yet. Uh, Lindsay had class, uh, uh, she's teaching a class and she's gonna join us in a few minutes. Lindsay's gonna talk about uh, wellness at general convention, which is both gonna be her beat and her, um, her, her spiritual discipline to help all the rest of us. 
um, and then uh, we'll take questions and answers. So that's that's what we've got in store for you here today. But first, let me introduce our team. So there are five of us um, at Canical Communications, and right now we are the we are the team for the House of Deputies office. And so I'm Rebecca Wilson. You will find me at General Convention most often in the House of Deputies media section, um, but, uh, but other places as well. Um, Jim Naughton, my partner, uh, you will find him running Deputy News along with Ann Swartston and Lindsay Ardrey. And um, Jim, I think you'll probably be bouncing back and forth between the House of Bishops and House of Deputies, but you can say that yourself. Um, I will be bouncing back and forth between the House of Bishops <laughs> and the House of Deputies. So I've been uh, I've been involved in communications at General Convention since 2009. Um, I I attended the 2006 General Convention, but just as a visitor. Um, so I've been around for a few, and um, and Jim I think has been involved for longer than that. Uh, um, Kathleen Moore, our communications manager here at Canical. Um, is uh, is simultaneously everywhere at General Convention, and I never can figure out how she does it. Um, but Kathleen will be uh, both one of the folks in the House of Deputies media section and um, and available in other places also to help out. And then our team in the House of Deputies office um, will be Sophie Kitchpeck and Megan Allen. And they are at the top of my Zoom screen, but um, but I don't know how your Zoom screen is configured. So you you will uh, get to see all of them here as we go. So that's who we are. Um, as we get started here, what I'd like to do is just launch a quick poll, a quick Zoom poll. You'll see it on your screen here, just to get a sense of how many general conventions you've attended, because that will help us know uh, what kind of what kind of experience people have with convention? Okay, so we have about half, a little more than half of us have never been to general convention. Uh, just over 20% have been to one. Um, and then we've got a smattering of folks who've, uh, who keep coming back for more, um, which, uh, I understand because I do it too, but that's a particular vocation, isn't it? Um, there we go. There's our poll. Great. So um, I will endeavor to uh, start us off by explaining things, hopefully in a way that's reasonably accessible to folks who haven't been to convention before. Feel free to put questions in the chat. And then at the end, we'll also ask people to you know, raise their hands and Sophie will call on you with questions. So no question is too basic if you've never been to general convention or even if you've been once or twice, um, because it really, it takes a few conventions to get the hang of things, at least in my experience. Um, so one of the first things that we wanna point you to, oh, here's Lindsay, so great. One of the first things we wanna point you to is the schedule for general convention. And I think Kathleen's gonna put that in the chat for us right now. Um, right now, the schedule is the only uh, is only available in PDF format um, on the General Convention website. Um, so the link is in the chat there for you. And it's helpful for you to, to have that PDF. There'll be an app, I think, the General Convention office is planning to, um, uh, you know, to, to launch that. Uh, so you'll be able to have this in some kind of interactive format. We've also had some requests to have, you know, Google Calendar and iCal downloads of the schedule. And I think we're, we're thinking on our team about how to make that happen. But your first, your first stopping place for any information about how things are gonna work at General Convention is that schedule. And Jim's gonna talk about it in much more detail about how you use that to figure out what you're gonna cover. Um, so, but hold on to that link. Um, each house, so the way General Convention works is that we have a House of Deputies and that's a huge, big, uh, space in uh, the Baltimore Convention Center. We have um, nearly 900 people uh, on the floor of the House of Deputies, plus those of us who are in the media section, in the visitors gallery, the official youth presence, all the different things that go on in the House of Deputies. So it's a really big space. Then you also have the House of Bishops, which is where all the bishops meet and do their legislative work. Um, this convention, for those of you who 
um, have been to previous conventions. This convention, the House of Bishops and House of Deputies are on the same floor and are relatively close to one another. So if you're running, yes, Kirk is, is applauding. If you're running back and forth between the two houses, that makes it a lot easier than around the corner, up the escalator, down the hallway, you know, um, to the next county, which is kind of what it has been in a couple of places. So, um, so you can look forward to that. Each, uh, each house of general convention has a media section and you'll need to be um, you know, registered as media. You'll need to have those credentials to get into the media section. There are visitor sections in both houses so that people can come in and visit, but the media section is a particular place because we are all there to do a particular kind of work. So in the House of Deputies, um, as, as President Jennings said, we've worked really hard in, in recent conventions to make the House of Deputies media section a hospitable place um, for all of us to get our work done. Um, we've already been able to work this year with um, the General Convention Office to make sure that the House, that the, the media section in the House of Deputies is positioned in a place where we have good sight lines so that you can actually get photos and videos of what's going on from the media section. That's been a problem in the past, right? We've like been behind a post or, you know, um, or, or straight on so that you can only get people in profile. We have worked on that. So we think that that is, is gonna be great. Um, we also work with um, the folks who are handling um, IT for the convention to make sure that we have good Wi-Fi signal for communicators in the media section. So we'll be, we'll be doing that work as well because obviously, especially these days, you can't really get anything done um, unless you have a good Wi-Fi section or wa good Wi-Fi signal. As we did at the last convention, for those of you who were there, um, we're going to have a system in the House of Deputies where communicators will be able to go on to the floor of the House of Deputies when business is in session to get photographs or videos when you need those. Maybe um, you know a deputy from your deputation is uh, the chair of a legislative committee and is giving a report, or maybe a deputy from your deputation is going to speak at the microphone about an issue that's particularly important or speak at the microphone about a resolution that your diocesan convention has brought forward and submitted to general convention. And you really need to be able to tell that story, share that news with your folks back home. We want you to be able to get onto the floor and get what you need. So I will have, this is really old school, but I will have probably four of these. I'm holding it up. I don't know if you can see it. It's a, it's a lanyard that says floor, access approved media, a House of Deputies only. I'll be hanging out in the House of Deputies media section doing my work, so will Kathleen most of the time. So if you know you're gonna need to get onto the floor, all you need to do is say to me, hey, I need a floor pass, go onto the floor, do your thing. When you come back out, give me the floor pass um, so I can give it to somebody else who also needs to get on. Um, uh, and, and then, the only thing we'll ask you to do is if you go on and you get really good photos, you get really good video about what's happening, we'll have a Dropbox folder for House of Deputies Media um, so that you can share, you know, kind of in a pool photography pool video system. Because if you are on the floor getting the big story, right, you want to be able to share that with your fellow communicators with, with credit, of course. So we'll have that available to you. And it, hopefully in that way, we can help share the load with one another um, so that not everybody has to be on the floor, you know, for every big story, we can we can take turns doing that. A few highlights to think about in the House of Deputies um, as you're thinking about how you're going to spend your time, and Jim is going to talk in much greater detail about this. Um, but um, we like to think that in the House of Deputies, one of our great uh, our great visuals, our great uh, uh, things that is, that are, are, is particular to the House of Deputies and the community that we build in that space and the way we do our work is our chaplain, Lester McKinsey um, from the Diocese of Los Angeles. If you, if you don't know Lester, um, you'll, you'll figure out what I mean when you get there. Um, but we, we love to have communicators be able to share photos and videos of Lester um, leading the house in prayer and in song and in dance. Um, this at this convention, we're also going to be electing a new president and vice president of the House of Deputies. We've sp sent out a little bit of information about that. It's posted on the House of Deputies website. Um, we'll be updating um, the information about those stories as we go, including some candidate forums that we're going to host in June. 
um, and some other resources for covering those elections. But that's a big thing. It doesn't happen at every convention. Um, well, it does, we do elect at every convention, but often it's an incumbent running unopposed. In this case, um, our incumbent President Jennings is moving on to a well-deserved retirement after serving her maximum number of terms as president. Um, and the same thing with Byron Rushing, uh, who's served his maximum number of terms as vice president. And so we will be electing new folks and that's, that's gonna be a big thing and lots of time, lots of focus in the House of Deputies on that. And then um, on the last day, of convention, we will have a celebration of President Jennings' 10 years as president of the House of Deputies. Um, she doesn't like to talk about it, uh, the fact that she's gonna be the center of attention on that day, but she is, and we'll make sure you have the resources to cover that story. Is there anything you wanna say, President Jennings? No. <laughs> okay. Um, we'll also have media briefings with deputies, as those and those of you who have covered convention before know. We uh, we always try to choose deputies who are at the center of the action of the day, so that, who can really share the story of what happened on the house uh, in the house that day with you. So we don't, you know, choose those briefers ahead of time. We choose them based on on what's happening. We're not yet sure how we're going to do those media briefings. We may mix it up a little bit from the ways we've done it in the past because there's certain structural. Uh, impediments to, to good coverage from the way we've done it in the past, but we haven't made those decisions yet. Um, we will definitely uh, we will definitely keep you posted on media briefings. Um, I will post in the chat here um, just a couple of links as Jim begins to talk, the link to the House of Deputies website where we'll be building out some resources for communicators um, in the next few months, the House of Deputies Facebook page, and then also the deputy news website. Um, I'll share that in the chat so that you can round up those links. Over to you, Jim. Thank you, thank you. My trackpad was a little unresponsive. Uh, hello, um, I'm Jim Naughton. This, uh, I work with Rebecca at, at Canticle. I've, uh, done media work for the president of the House of Deputies in one form or other uh, since 2006 when Bonnie Anderson was was in that role and and I've written from general convention uh, since 2006 uh, so um, I'm not sure uh, that I have uh, well I'd, I'd say that I have some sense of what the physical, and mental, and I'd say even emotional challenges uh, of going about the work are. And I'd say that uh, that you should be kind to yourselves uh, and not underestimate those challenges. Uh, general convention is can be quite a demanding uh, in, environment. Um, the first thing, so what I'd like to do is try to do the best I can to kind of give you a sense of like, how can I get my work done without making myself crazy? Um, because uh, there are plenty of days at general convention where you just you just want to say to people, you need a nap, you need a sandwich, you know, you need to go outside and touch grass because uh, it's just an unusual environment. And so I want to see if we can't be as as well prepared for it as possible. Um, I see in the chat that folks are asking about credentials, and I will will drop in what we have uh, in that regard at the moment. But yes, Lisa Webb in in the uh, public affairs office is handling that, and I will just uh, I will just drop that uh, link in the chat now. The first thing I'd like to do um, after I do that is just sort of look at the schedule and say, all right, what can we make of the schedule? You know, how can we uh, look at it and figure out what our days might be able to be like and, and in ways that would uh, not drive us into the ground? So let's, um, I'm sorry, I'm having all kinds of trackpad problems. Um, so let's look Jim, at do you that. want do you want me to share? Would that be helpful? I got share it. my screen. I got it okay. now. I got it. Okay. So here's one of the things that is difficult about general convention. Things start early in the morning. 
uh, you will see that uh, there, there are legislative hearings on numerous days that start at 7.30 in the morning. And here's another thing that's hard about general convention. There are also days when legislative sessions, as opposed to legislative hearings, go quite late, like as late as 10 o'clock. Now that's only for the last couple of days when you know there might be uh, more legislation sort of stacked up needing to land. But you will be kind of on the move a lot if you intend to cover legislative hearings. Have a look at the schedule. You can see where those are, kind of a bluish gray color. Um, then here's where I think strategic planning can help you most. After nine o'clock and before those afternoon legislative sessions uh, that begin at 1.30, you've got some time that's a little more, except on one of those days, a little more elective. Um, I like to go to the Eucharist usually, uh, and obviously some of you will have uh, folks participating and you'll want to do something about you know, their participation, but this is not, you're not going to miss legislation while this stuff is going on, right? Now, you, again, there are some of these community gatherings where you're going to say, oh, I have a speaker at the community gathering, or oh, the speaker who's speaking at the gathering really is important. Their issue is very important. But you have a little more sort of fungibility there. And you have more lunch time than we've had at previous conventions. So when you are looking at uh, the schedule, you have an opportunity to say, OK, I know what my local needs are for my diocese. I know what kind of content I'm producing that day. Is it, you know, am I writing during my lunchtime perhaps? Or am I editing video? Uh, but you have some sense of where the fungibility is here if you don't want to miss legislative session, right? Now, on the other hand, you may indeed say, yeah, the legislative sessions aren't doing anything for me today, or I can take a roundup on them. But you can at least look at this stuff and sort of say, okay, I have a plan for what I'm gonna do with myself today. Um, that's the beginning, I think, of, of trying to figure things out. The other thing though is you'll wanna know what's happening legislatively every day. Um, and to do that, to best do that, you'll wanna have a sense of how to use the virtual binder. I don't know. I mean, I'm gathering. I think I saw that 75% of you don't have uh, don't have a uh, haven't been to convention before, and so you're not familiar with the binder, perhaps, um, or maybe you've been getting familiar with the binder uh, as you've tried to listen in on pre, you know, the hearings that have been taking place online. This is the homepage for the House of Deputies in the virtual binder. And the two things I wanna call your attention to are where you will find resolutions, which is here. So when you're looking for what texts might be for resolutions, what's gonna come under consideration, that's here. And then the other thing I wanna mention is calendars. Now there's nothing in here right now, but every day there's a committee called the Dispatch of Business Committee. The Dispatch of Business Committee tells you what's gonna be happening that day. And so they have to publish a calendar. It will be there every morning. So you can get up and say, all right, here are the things that are important to me. It looks like none of them are happening until like the fourth order of business that day. So maybe I can get this done before I go into the legislative session, or maybe I can you know, spend time with uh, my hometown deputation if they are not uh, in hearings or whatever. But you have a sense of just what is gonna come up and in what order. And that will help you a lot in terms of just kind of knowing how your day is going to flow. Um, it's important to remember that the convention hall is vast. I mean, there, are, there will be more than a thousand people in the House of Deputies at any given time. So it's a lot of space. 
just to cross it back and forth is a physical event. Uh, and while you're close to the House of Bishops this time, it's still moving from one house to the other, not easy. Moving from the house to get something to eat, I don't know where the food stands are gonna be, but again, kind of a challenge, right? Getting from the House of Deputies to where you can sit down to write or record, again, can be a challenge. There will be places in the House of Deputies media area where it's very easy to write. I mean, we're basically all just sitting there at tables with our computers in front of us. It's not necessarily the quietest place in the world. So you have that, you, you may not be able to easily record there and you might need to stake out places to do that. So you wanna figure out, is that my hotel room? Is that, oh, does the head of the deputation have a suite where the bishop has a suite and they'll let us use one of the rooms? but you'll want to figure something like that out ahead of time, okay? Now, once things get rolling, there are a few things that are sort of uh, generally confusing for people. One is what we call the house of initial action. And I'm gonna talk to you just a little bit about that. Um, legislative committees at general convention, it can be, this can be confusing. Uh, legislative committees um, meet together. The House of Bishops Committee, the House of Deputies Committee, they meet together. So you can have the impression that these are the same committee. And for all practical purposes, they're the same committee. However, technically, it is two separate committees meeting together. So sometimes one committee does something the other doesn't. You'll just wanna be aware of that. If you hear the people using the phrase cognate committee, that's, some of what's, that, that's what they're talking about, these two committees meeting together. Now, once a committee takes action on something, okay, we've passed this resolution, it goes to one of the houses. It can be important which house it goes to first because they might be the house that really wants to get their hands on this and amend this and move that, et cetera, et cetera. And then the house it goes to next might say, okay, they've worked it over and this is complex and we're probably just gonna pass this and not bother to send it back to them. So it can matter which house things go to first. House of initial action is the phrase. These, this is the list of the house of initial action. I'm gonna put it in the chat when I'm sort of done moving things around, but that's just something for you to know. Now, the other thing that it can be important to know is that sometimes things end up on what's called the consent calendar. Um, if something's on the consent calendar, it means that it can be passed without actually being debated or discussed. There are lots and lots and lots of resolutions at General Convention, and some of them are affirm that good is good. You don't necessarily have to take affirming that good is good to the floor. People will generally go, oh, yeah, that, that makes sense. So it can go on what's called the consent calendar. We just say, yeah, of course, no need to debate it. But the thing to know is that the consent calendar functions differently in each house. If something is passed by that committee of the House of Deputies that I talked about earlier, it goes on the calendar automatically. It goes on the consent calendar automatically you have to take it off if you want to. This helps just streamline the number of resolutions that come up for debate. In the House of Bishops, that's not the case. The legislative committee of the House of Bishops has to decide to put it on the consent calendar. And so sometimes people get confused about what's on consent calendars and how consent calendars function. And there's been a tendency in the past, and I'm not exactly sure where this comes from, but to assume that because something was on a consent calendar in one house and they acted first, it has to be on the consent calendar in the other house. That's just not the case. There is no, there's, there's no relationship. The, the consent calendar in one house does not influence the consent calendar in the other house. If you hear people talking that way, which does happen, you, you know that they are misinformed. It's not you, it's them. <laughs> um, so the other uh, 
The other thing that you'll want to make sure that you can do, in, and again, this is where the virtual binder is going to come into play, is just figure out uh, when you look at the calendar, uh, when you look at what comes from the dispatch of business committee that day, you know, what are you going to be writing about? What might be your lead or what might you be interviewing your bishop about? Or what might you be recording the short video about? And obviously, if you're producing things for that day or the next day, rather than like a newsletter in two weeks or something, having good news judgment about which of the things that passed that day is going to be important. Uh, having a sense of, oh, this makes a huge difference to the church um, is going to be important. And I would say that this year, for the first time um, that I've been covering conventions, what's going to make the biggest difference is not really obvious to me. Um, you know, for so many conventions, we were involved with uh, moving towards uh, greater openness to LGBTQ people. We were, move, we were involved in moving towards marriage equality. We were dealing with issues that really, in which maybe our membership or the nature of our membership in the Anglican community was at stake. I don't really see things of that like, oh, everybody's going to flood that hearing. Now, as it happens, we do kind of behave as PACs. And so there will be some hearing that everybody floods, but it, but it may not become obvious right away. Uh, and so I'd say that you need to be sort of flexible in your news judgment about what's going to receive uh, the, the most coverage. That will make a big difference for where you tend, where you feel like you need to spend your time. Um, and the final thing I'd say before I shut up and turn this over to my colleague, Ann Swartzen, is that um, you will want, if you have folks that you are friends with, that you've worked with before, you may want to join forces at times and just say, look, I'll do this hearing if you do that one and we'll share notes or whatever. And I've got a deputy in that meeting, but I've got two in this meeting. So if you're gonna cover that meeting for me, can you keep an eye on my deputy? That sort of thing. So pooling your resources, uh, will be important. Now, before I hand it over to Anne, the one thing I want to do is uh, I, I see that, uh, that, that Katie Sherrod is with us today. Katie uh, has been at this uh, longer, more diligently, and more passionately than I have. And so I just want to see if she might have anything she wants to add uh, that would be helpful. Um, yes, thank, thank you, uh, Jim. I appreciate that. Um, Yes, I have worked as a reporter covering general convention, and now I'm a deputy because of interesting changes in our diocese. And um, there are some things I would suggest. Um, you need a plan. You need to know uh, what are the hot button issues in your diocese, if not in the church. And I have, uh, if you, before going to general convention, I would make sure you set up one place where your audience can find the news and train them to go there and start posting information about General Convention now with helpful links. Um, and then think about who your audience is. Is it your diocese or an advocacy, advocacy group or a seminary? Because that's going to help you decide what you need to cover yourself and what you can safely leave to other news sources. Um, because there are a lot of people covering general convention and you do not have to do it all. Um, make sure you know your deputation and your bishop if you already don't know them all. They need to know you and trust you because they're going to be your news sources and leads and their local voices are going to mean a lot to the folks back home. Find out who among your deputation is a reliable user of Twitter and who might be planning on live tweeting some events. Some of those may be posting to the personal Facebook pages. Just make sure, sure your audience knows how to follow them and who among your deputation would be willing to take and post photos. Uh, make sure you have the cell phone number of everyone in your deputation and your bish bishop because general convention is huge and it's easy to lose people. Make sure everyone knows how to text and then use it or use an app like GroupMe to stay in touch with one another. 
Remind your deputation they're expected to make an official report to their diocese about what happens, and so it's in their interest to help you cover it so they can rely on your reporting in the future. Now, at General Convention, um, work in the news, the shared news spaces, if you can, introduce yourself. There's much willingness and camaraderie to help among the people covering uh, convention, because it's like a war zone. You're all in there together. Um, and while the war metaphor is not as bad as it used to be um, when before certain people left for other denominations, it's still you need a strategy and stick to it. Um, attend your deputations meetings if you can attend the official news briefings. Um, and I would also advise not neglecting daily worship because sermons can often be springboards to stories and then. Um, Take care of yourself. Uh, General Convention is a marathon, not a sprint. And Jim can tell you more about the difference between those two things. He's a runner, I am not. Um, but, uh, and then as the chat has already urged you, wear very comfortable shoes or you will die. So there you have it. Thank you, Katie. Appreciate that. Um, and so in 2015, we started a, a, an initiative called Deputy News. It, it covers a general convention from the House of Deputies sort of perspective, although not exclusively. Uh, and we've got, uh, we've got, in some years, Deputy News has basically been sort of me and four other people I could put my hands on. Um, but this year we've got a larger team. Uh, we have people with many more uh, mastery of many more mediums. And so uh, we're really looking forward to it. And my colleague, Ann Swartzen, is going to talk a little bit about that. Ann? Great. Uh, thank you, Jim. And uh, thank you, Katie. I learned a lot from listening to you. Um, yes, um, one of the things, before I tell you what Deputy News is going to be, is um, one of the things Deputy News can do is help you all set your agenda, right? Obviously you'll be doing quote, local coverage, your own deputation, um, but also one of the things any news um, organization does is pick and choose among issues, right? So do read Deputy News at least once a day and hopefully that'll help you uh, follow what's going on at convention. Um, let me introduce myself a little bit before I go on about that. Um, I'm from the Convocation of Episcopal Churches in Europe. Um, this will be my second uh, general convention. And um, I was asked to uh, co-run Deputy News uh, by Jim, with whom uh, I worked at the Washington Post. I won't even try to think about how long ago, but, uh, but I'm glad to be here with my, uh, with my former colleague. Um, Rebecca, is this, could you, I, I know that the link is in the chat. But could you or someone share the uh, homepage of our first edition, if you will? Absolutely. Um, we're, we, we've started coverage already. We're, a, um, we're gonna be covering all the issues at convention uh, and then some, as Jim says, uh, in past years, the team has been quite small. This year, we're about 14. Uh, we have people who do uh, video and people who do TV, which I count as a slightly different uh, skill, uh, still photographers, uh, writers, editors, um, social media. Um, sorry, I should have said a team of 14 plus the uh, folks at uh, Canical Communication, Communications, uh, who you've already met. We're going to be covering, um, as you can see here from our inaugural edition, um, the, the legislative process. Um, and that's, we've already begun. We're covering uh, hearings uh, online, especially where uh, resolutions have been uh, introduced. And obviously we're gonna cover the entire legislative process all the way through in, in a way that um, we hope is useful to not just deputies, but maybe even bishops. And uh, in addition, like any news organization, we're gonna have features. Uh, we're gonna do, uh, what we call deep dives, in-depth stories on uh, uh, key issues uh, leading up to convention. And then we'll continue to follow those issues uh, through the process. Profiles of people who 
maybe, uh, especially on video, someone who's here for the first time. There's a lot of those, as you know. Uh, someone who may have thoughts about convention and how they're reacting. Um, so, uh, there will be times when there's a subject of conversation that all of a sudden comes up that everybody's talking about. We want to be part of that conversation and help uh, set that agenda. Uh, we'll be seeking ideas. So if you have a story idea, if there's something going on that you think is important, don't hesitate to tell us with the kind of uh, uh, strong bench that we have uh, this year. We should be able to cover a lot of things that weren't possible before, even though there has been a great deal of coverage before. And um, the sky's the limit. In fact, we may have a drone. We haven't quite seen if that's going to work inside the convention center yet, but, uh, but we hope so. Uh, so thank you. And I'm going to turn it over now to our vice chair, uh, Lindsay Ardry, who is going to talk about one of the most important issues at convention. Thank you so much for that, Anne. Um, I'm glad to be here. I am uh, Lindsay Ardry. I am serving as chaplain at a school and uh, serving as a middle school teacher. So if you hear any noises in the background, it is lunchtime slash free play and I'm right by the exit. So um, excuse that <laughs> if you hear those noises. Um, well, one thing that I do want to say about myself is that I love rest, I love napping, and I love to help other people and watch other people nap and rest and take care of themselves. Uh, and so when uh, Jim and Katie and others have talked about, um, you know, making sure to take care of yourself, making sure you're hydrated, making sure you have those comfortable shoes. Um, I, um, I, I want to be able to um, track this at, at general convention. Um, and so focusing in on the, the challenges to general convention, um, it is a big family reunion type of time, but there is governance that, that happens. And um, as, I've, as I've been told, um, it's it's a uh, <laughs> it's quite a sight to see as we go along the days we can kind of see how far we've gone into general convention um, by matching how people are acting or or reacting um, perhaps things that could be solved with a nap or a, a, a snack or a Snickers you've all seen the commercials um, so um, that's what we'll be tracking and particularly looking at um, people, uh, deputies of color, um, folks who may be differently abled um, and other marginalized groups, how, how are they experiencing um, general convention? Um, and, and people who have other health concerns. Um, and I'm really wanting to look at this as um, rest and Sabbathing uh, as, social justice, um, deep healing kind of work. And so how do we love and follow Jesus and Jesus's call to see the unseen, to come to Jesus um, for rest during our weariness? And how do we continue to do the work um, of, of governance of the church? How how do um, how can governance bring us to life, and how can we bring life into uh, our our governance, and how do we see those as um, mutually exclusive as one of of one another? And so um, that's that's kind of what I'll be doing: doing deep dives, having conversations, possibly doing interviews, um, video interviews, having um, writing conversations that I'm having um, with folks both in the House of Bishops and deputies. So if you know of anyone that is into this kind of into this kind of work, or um, you yourself have experienced this um, and have 
um, because this is only my my second convention. Um, and so if you have some insight, I would um, greatly appreciate if you um, shout me uh, a holler um, through some kind of way. Um, I'm hoping that um, this can be something that we that we talk about a lot more and that we just lift up uh, and and elevate. Thank you. I'm just going to jump back in to, to say two quick things. One, uh, again, about logistics is that often uh, people make the mistake of uh, saying, like, if you need to meet your one of your deputies, people say, well, I'll meet you after the session. When the legislative session ends, 900 people stand up at the same time and leave a space. Uh, and you might have eye contact. You, you might see the person. You might be calling to them. Uh, and you cannot get their attention. I know this from wrangling people that I needed to get from the floor of the House of Deputies to the media conference afterwards. So if you need to do that, tell the, figure out ahead of time, I'm going to meet you, you know, outside this door. You want to be as specific as you can about that. The other thing I wanted to tell you is I, I, uh, Deputy News, when it started in 2015, um, started in a period when we were not certain how Episcopal News Service was going to cover that convention, and we wanted to make sure that certain things were covered. Um, that issue has, is long gone. Uh, so we have, I think, a terrific relationship with Episcopal News Service. We share their things. Uh, they and any of you can share our things with with credit, it's very much a collegial and collaborative thing. And so if you were wondering about that, it, it's, it's, there is no rivalry there. I mean, sure, we like to have our stories up five minutes before they have their stories up or whatever, uh, but that's just, you know, that's just fun. Um, <laughs> but Jim, there's, there's not a rivalry there. And Jim, Sorry, it might be helpful just to clarify that in um, when Deputy News did start in 2015, um, the concerns that we were, uh, the concerns of transparency that we were trying to address had nothing to do with the, the actual reporters at Episcopal News Service at the time. That, uh, I just all. want to make sure nobody, nobody holds any of the staff who were working at EMS at the time uh, are responsible for any of that. Yeah, right. That's all from me. Sophie, I think it's over to you to moderate questions, please. All right, so if you have a question for any of our panelists, you can put it in the chat and I will read it out, or you are welcome to raise your hand and I will call on you in the order in which you appear on my screen. I should say while folks are posting their questions or putting their hands up that Sophie is a former deputy uh, and uh, also a, a recent um, um, alumnus of Episcopal Service Corps, and we were very fortunate uh, to get them to come and work with us at Canical. So Sophie has a wealth of experience that they'll be able to share with you at convention as well. Ooh, all right, uh, from Laurel Way in the chat. For those of us who are not attending in person, but would still like to post updates on general convention, what are some resources we can use? Um, we haven't totally nailed this down yet, Laurel, but um, one of the things that I think we're gonna try to do uh, it, it, for Deputy News is, is a news blog. I don't know if folks follow like, um, like the New York Times when they're like on Oscar night or when primary election returns are coming in. And so, you know, the next day or maybe late that night, you'll get a traditional journalistic story of 800 words with quotes and things like that. But while it's happening, you'll sometimes just get, uh, you know, so-and-so has just taken a lead in the early counting of the votes. And it'll be like a paragraph and there's no pretense to having done an interview or whatever. It's just an update of the news. So. That is if what you want to do is sort of like update people quite regularly. Uh, but then you can also, I mean, both ENS and Deputy News will be producing stories uh, that are, you know, have the results, so to speak. And I think all of you um, 
all of you uh, know that they're, the Office of Communications will be doing a, a live stream of what's happening in both houses. So you will actually be able to log on and watch legislative session. That doesn't help you cover legislative committees, um, but, but as Jim said, there may be other ways we can help make that happen when legislative committees are, are doing particularly newsworthy things. And Ali says in the chat, um, Twitter can be helpful with real time, but talk about a wellness challenge. Um, Lindsay, you may need like a whole thing about surviving Episcopal Twitter. So that's, <laughs> enter with caution. <laughs> All right, we have another question in the chat uh, from Lori Blewett. Uh, sounds like a focus on diocesan and broader church story angles. Thoughts on parish angles on how to localize, quote, these are the topics important to us. That's an excellent question. Um, I obviously, and Lori, you'll have the, the knowledge here, but, uh, but it could be the case that because of the particular uh, demographics of your church uh, or the priority ministries at your church uh, or the role that a member of your congregation is playing, that these things will be obvious. Uh, you know, I mean, there are certainly going to be, for instance, if you have a, a, a strong Latino element in your congregation, there will be resolutions that, that sort of speak to that. Uh, if your congregation is very involved in certain kinds of social justice work, there will be resolutions that speak to that. Um, if it's been a particularly welcoming congregation uh, for LGBTQ folks, you know that we're not in the same kind of struggle uh, on this, uh, sort of with the same all-consuming intensity. But obviously, those issues still present themselves. So. I think the thing to do is try to familiarize yourself with just sort of what might show up, you know, next door for us. How might this cause our vestry to do something different than it's doing now? That, that sort of thing, I think, is probably the way to go. All right, next question in the chat is from Jay K. Keely Thrall, is there an equivalent Bishop's News Service? There is not an equivalent Bishop's News Service. Um, one, of the, one of the things you, you'll see if you haven't been to convention before, and this is true if you're watching the live stream too, um, the difference between having a body of say 125 to 160 people, many of whom see each other regularly and all of whom have the opportunity to meet together maybe twice a year, that's, re that's a really different kind of meeting, whether those people are bishops or bakers, uh, than a meeting with almost 900 people at, who, you know, some of them might know each other, but, but the, the assumption is that maybe you know an eighth of the people in that room at most, maybe more like a 16th, uh, than in the House of Bishops, where you know every single person by name. And so the, the task of communicating about what's happening in those two environments uh, is, is just really different. And, and so, um, yeah, hence Deputy News. And that is something to just be aware of and you'll get the hang of it when you're there in your coverage, the House of, the House of Bishops. I mean, both houses you know, have to vote on things and debate things, but the just the vibe of being in the House of Bishops is really different. The, the, the debate is much more free form. Um, they sit at round tables. It's just a very, very different vibe for legislative debate, whereas President Jennings sits up on a, on a platform so everybody can see her. And um, if you ever have wanted to, uh, to see parliamentary procedure elevated to an art form, all you need to do is watch President Jennings preside over the House of Deputies. Um, and it's a good thing because it would be chaos if we didn't have, if we didn't run according to very tight rules of order and parliamentary procedure. But President Jennings, do you want to say anything more about that? No, but I, I guess I would add one thing in terms of sitting in a platform elevated so I can see the whole house. 
And by the way, we will have screens. There are three big screens behind where I sit on the platform with other members of the platform team that show what's going on. But we will also have screens about midway in the House of Deputies. So people in the back, I mean, we're, we're as big as a football field, practically. I'm not sure that's exactly right, but so the, but you'll be able to see those screens halfway back. One of the things I did not anticipate when I, at my first convention presiding was um, that when you're sitting in the platform, you can almost, there's almost a, um, a palpable feeling to when the house is either anxious or antsy or excited. And, and I think uh, what's, what is the experience of a, a number of communicators is sitting on the side um, is that you'll be able to have that same sense in many respects. So uh, it, it's, uh, it, it is a very different experience in the House of Deputies than in the House of Bishops. And the great thing is we need both uh, for the health and well-being of our church. All right, so the next question we have in the chat is, are there hashtags we know we are, we are going to be using, especially to follow on Twitter? Uh, so I can actually answer this question as uh, one of the people designated to doing social media uh, for the upcoming convention. And the hashtag will, in fact, be hashtag GC80. Uh, I would also recommend the hashtag hashtag Episcopal. Um, I, sometimes people hashtag the house that they're uh, watching or in. Uh, so, some t uh, so if you see a hashtag that says hashtag HOB, hashtag HOD, or hashtag House of Bishops, or hashtag House of Deputies, those are also helpful to follow as well. But we will definitely be using the hashtag DC80. And that reminds me to say, watch for the House of Deputies news TikTok premiere. And that's all I know about it, <laughs> but I'm excited. <laughs> and yes. so for those of you who were in Austin, there is also a Twitter feed for the House of Deputies Pigeon. And Instagram. Uh, which, which and was, Instagram. Uh, and Instagram, which was a lot of fun last time. And uh, we'll see if that gets um, uh, used again this time. The other thing is, and I don't have the, 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 the hashtag in front of me, but we'll find it, is that the parliamentarian of the House of Deputies, Brian Krizlock, is um, significantly younger than I am. And he started a Twitter feed uh, in 2015 that he watches while I am presiding and he is uh, advising me as the parliamentarian so that people can actually tweet a question to him in real time in terms of what's going on, what's happening. And the deputies have made good use of that. And I think others outside of the deputies have, have used it as well. So we'll make sure uh, that we make I've, that available to you. But I've, I don't actually, I've actually put that in the chat. It's H at, at HOD platform. Right, and the picture on it, I believe is uh, William White, the first president of the House of Deputies, at least that was the picture on it in the past. It seems like right as of right now, we have no more questions uh, and no hands raised. I've also just put in the chat as we're closing um, the email address uh, contact at houseofdeputies.org that comes to our whole team uh, at Canical. So that is a really good way to get any question answered, to, um, uh, to follow up on something that you didn't wanna ask in public um, or to get more resources. And um, we also urge you to sign up for the House of Deputies newsletter. Kathleen, I think you put that in the chat earlier. Um, oh, and there it is again, um, because we will make sure that we, that we send links to you know, this, the, the recording of this meeting to other resources that we're posting for communicators. We're gonna be doing a, a general convention uh, preview story that we'll make available to any of you. 
Um, so we'll we'll post in the communicators list serve too for sure. But if not, everybody's a member of Episcopal communicators. We'll also be putting resources in the House of Deputies newsletter. But we want to hear from you. We want to answer your questions ahead of time, and we want to provide whatever resources are helpful to you. So please, you know that contact at houseofdeputies.org email. It comes to me and to Kathleen and to Sophie and to Megan and to Jim and any of us can can field it. There's a lot of conversation about seafood in the chat, so I would definitely attend to that. Not an option that we had in uh, Austin. President Jennings, will you close us? Yes, thank you. Thank you so much for coming. Thank you so much for covering General Convention and the House of Deputies. Uh, I hope this has been helpful to you. We, again, want to be as hospitable as possible and provide resources to help you do your work uh, in the way you'd like to be able to do it. Uh, let us pray. Oh God, we give you thanks for everyone who communicates the gospel in a variety of ways, especially pray for those present today for their health, for their well being, for their commitment to transparency, to telling the great story of our faith to those whom they serve. God bless you and keep you. See you in Baltimore. <laughs>